Hey there! Today I'm going to talk about art materials and specifically the art materials that I like to use. I'm going to go over some of the sketchbooks that I've tried and also talk a little bit about the colored pencils that I use and then my favorite Copic markers. Let's get started! Sketchbooks! So I'm going to talk about some of the sketchbooks I've used and what I think about each one of them. Here's the Cottonwood Art sketchbook on the interior. This is some stuff that I drew when I was coming out to Seattle to visit one time. I just drew everything I saw, like this is the view from the apartment where I was staying. And this is all done with Copic markers, and you can see it, it definitely bleeds through. And at the time, I was really not happy about that. I really wanted to find a sketchbook that didn't bleed through. But the more I worked with this, the more I liked it. Please ignore my circles. I still can't draw circles. And I still kind of like the way this looks, but as I would progress on to other sketchbooks, I'd find that I really liked the way those blended more. But this is an idea of how Copics look on this paper. It's kind of a smooth surface, uh, so it doesn't have a whole lot of texture to it. And it's kind of thick. Um, it's also got some streaks here. And I also used some watercolor here. I did a, uh, what is this called? The stuff where <laughs> you peel it off and then you can paint over it afterwards. Um, or you peel it off after that. I don't remember. Anyway, that's what I did. So it also handles watercolor. It did buckle a little bit. You can see that the paper is kind of buckled there. But mostly I used Copics, and you can see my sketchbook is kind of like falling apart here. And then I also kept on experimenting, so this is a weird picture from when I was in bed one night and just drawing, and that's my cat. So yeah, I also started a drawing challenge in here. This was pretty nice, but the other sketchbooks that I'll show you, I think I liked them more. So let's take a look at those. The Global Art Materials Handbook. This is a little 5x5 five five sketchbook that would turn out to be one of my favorites. It's got kind of a matte surface, it's like a fabric covered um, surface that gets covered in cat hair if you have cats like I do, who is running around right now as I'm filming this. And inside the pages are textured a little bit. They feel a little bit like watercolor paper, and I really like that. At first it was really weird for me to blend Copic on here, but I really love the way it turns out. Like you can see how they just blend together really well. And I like how it kind of gets that watercolor effect. These are a lot of unfinished sketches that I did from our trip to Europe, but I also did a lot of my dog sketches in here. So if you watched uh, my last video, it's I think it's in here. If not, there are tons of other dogs in here. And you'll see here too that this Copic also bleeds through. But really, I think that's okay. I don't think it's really a problem. I think it's actually kind of cool to see the finished drawing on one side and on the other side. Global Art Materials Handbook is a winner. So remember how I said at first I didn't like Copic bleeding through my pages? Well, my boyfriend got me this sketchbook, which is the render paper sketchbook. And you know what that means, stuff doesn't bleed through. So what did I think of it? Well, first of all, when you open it up, it has this kind of grayish tint to the pages. So you think that oh, is this a really thick page? And it probably is. It also smells kind of funny. I did some work with it here in gray, mostly using Copics, and I thought this came out okay. I kind of liked how the grays looked on here, but then when I went to use color, I don't even know what this is. I drew this for a friend. When I went to use color, I wasn't super happy with how things blended. Like, no, it doesn't go through on the other side. Like, you can't even tell that I did Copics on one side. But you also can't blend, so you have to work really fast, and even then you might not be fast enough to do it. Um, I think like black and white and gray work really well with this paper, but if you're going to do color, it's really not the best. Like I really couldn't blend this well here, so I wasn't super happy with it. So after that, I stopped using it. So let's talk about like term 1917. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. I think it's a German name. Again, these are just stickers on mine. I got the teal color because I really liked it. And I think they use these for, you know, not just sketching. Uh, a lot of people do other things with them like write and draw. So you have like this nice table of contents and you also get stickers so that you can organize your content. You get a little pocket, which is kind of cool. Pages are really thin, 
like really thin, copy paper thin. But I really like the way it blended here. I think that it's very similar to the Global Art Materials Handbook and that it lets you kind of work with it like it's watercolor. Like again, these are all Copics. And once again, it bleeds through, but I really don't care anymore. I just like how the color works. I think that it's really nice. Also has numbered pages and I think it's pretty nice. I'd recommend this as well. Now the fun part. What's in my pencil bag? I got this pencil bag at the Artists and Craftsman store here in Seattle, which if you're in Seattle, it's much easier to go to than say Blick. As far as parking, I moved here beginning of December 2015. Coming from Florida, I'm used to there being parking lots everywhere. There are not parking lots everywhere here. So long story short, if you're here, you should go to Artist and Craftsman Supply instead. With that being said, you can't, I mean, this bag is not only carried there. So I have an eraser that is not going to focus. I will just hold it here because I still haven't figured out exactly how to get my camera to focus while I'm filming, so bear with me. This is an eraser that I cut in half. I think it's one of the ones that's not supposed to have eraser dust but that totally doesn't happen and I broke them up into little pieces so I would have more of them and I could use them more easily. So I always have one of those with me and I also have a eraser too. It looks like a pencil but it's got a little fine eraser that you can keep pumping through to be able to erase small areas. It's by Tombow and it's called a Mono Zero and they make different kinds. There's one that has a square edge at the end and mine is a like an elliptical shape. This has been really nice because the other eraser, as you can tell, like the difference here is pretty significant. This covers a lot of surface area, this doesn't. So I keep both of those here and you can also get refills for this, which is really nice. I've gone through two already. I also use Prismacolor Color Erase. I think they're called Color Erase. Colored pencils. This one is in non-photo blue. So the idea is, if you don't know about these, you can sketch something with these blue pencils and then when you scan it, you can put it in Photoshop and turn off that channel so that you don't see this anymore. Because they really don't erase that much. They say they erase and I have the other set that has different colors that have erasers on the end, but they really don't erase. This particular one doesn't come with an eraser, it's just meant for sketching and I guess not erasing. <laughs> and I've even tried my eraser, dustless eraser with it and it doesn't really work. But if you're going to scan your artwork in any way, which you probably are, then it doesn't really matter. So I usually use that or one of my other Call Erase colored pencils, depending on what I'm feeling like, to initially sketch out my drawing. And I've been using Copic Multiliners and I bought a four pack from Amazon. They look like this and they're four different sizes. So this one is the .05. Sorry, I know you can't see that. <laughs> and the other ones are 0.03, 0 0.1, and 0.3. And they're nice, but the, the problem that I've had with them is that they tend to skip, and I don't know if that's because they're cheaper, which they were a lot cheaper than the ones in the store, like this one, for example. This is the 0.25, and I think I got this at, I don't even know now, some art supply store. You can find them anywhere, basically, that Copics are sold. And this one is probably my favorite because it lines the most smoothly, but it is um, kind of a heavy line. They have different weights, so I'm not sure why they have, you know, these two different styles. So maybe this one is just more inexpensive. I don't know. If you know, let me know. I typically use a 0.03 or 0.05 when I'm outlining and then go back over it with one of the thicker ones, and I'm still working on my outlining, so this is by no means a finished process. It is always going to be a work in progress because I'm not very good at outlining. <laughs> but I found that these work pretty well because when you add Copics on top of them, they tend not to bleed. Sometimes they will if you go, you know, too fast. But most of the time they just sit there and do their thing and you can Copic right over them. Is that a verb? I don't know. But nothing will happen. So then on to Copics themselves, my favorites. This is one of the chow markers, so it's one of the little ones. They're also cheaper, and if you've never used Copics before, they have two ends. They have a brush end, which I never knew until recently that if you look for the gray band on one end, that uh, indicates that it's the brush end. So you get a brush tip, and then on the other end, you have a chisel. 
I hardly ever use the chisel. It feels very school markery type. So I always use the brush end. And I have a couple of chows. And then most of my Copic collection is comprised of this type, the sketch marker. And I think I have about 60 or so Copic markers now. And I feel like I've reached a pretty good place where I don't need any more markers. Um, so basically what I'm doing now is kind of buying more as I find that I need them. Like I'll be working on a drawing and think, oh, I wish I had this particular color. And then I'll have to just remember to go get that next time. By the way, if you're using an iPhone, there is an app that someone made. I don't think it's an official Copic app. Uh, but you can get that to make a list of all the Copics that you have so that next time you go to the store you can look at it and see which ones you have which is really helpful because once you start amassing a pretty big collection you're probably not going to remember every color that you have when you're at the store so I would recommend downloading that and I'll find the name of it and tell you guys at the end of this video. The last thing that I have in my bag here is my pencil sharpener. Just this tiny little pencil sharpener that I got at the store and I used to have another one so I would have one in my pencil bag and one at home so I would never be without a pencil sharpener because I go through pencils kind of fast. So that's the that's the bag. The last thing is the Copic app and this is the app that lets you organize all of the markers that you have so these are the BBs that I have and the V's and if I want to add more or see what else is out there, I can go to all and see which ones I don't have yet. And the ones that are kind of propped up like that are the ones that I do have. Which is really nice so I can see where the gaps are in my collection. And I can also browse. So if you need a way to keep track of your Copics, I would recommend this. Oh, and one more thing fluid paper that I've been using for bigger projects. I was doing a project this last year where I was drawing portraits for each of my family members for their birthdays and I wanted to get some kind of watercolor style paper because I really like how Copics look on watercolor paper. And this is actually by Global Art Materials and if you remember they made the sketchbook that I really like, the handbook. So this is a 8x10 size. I've been really happy with this. I've also done some other work on it, like these cookies. This is a cold press finish. I think they also have a hot press version. But I've been really happy with it. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound. Sometimes that stuff doesn't really make sense to me, so I'm just like, if my drawing looks good on it, that's good. So I'm kind of not the most aware paper buyer. But I will buy this again in the future. Uh, there, there's not a whole lot that comes with it. I think you only get about 12 sheets. 12 sheets. But I really like how things look on it, so I'll probably get it again. I hope that this uh, helped you, maybe if you're looking to buy some art supplies to kind of get an idea of what you might want to look for, and let me know what art supplies you like. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks!